What's going on guys, Matt Everett here with Lethal Camaro and today I'm going to provide my review on the Toyo Tires R888s or the Proxess or however you pronounce that, R888s um, that are mainly meant for the track. So first and foremost, these are track tires. These are not daily driving tires. You could use them as daily driving tires, but you would just be wasting money. I don't drive nearly as much as I used to, so I have them on my car as my daily currently as I work out a second set of rims and a second set of tires. Um, as of right now, I've put about 550 miles on these tires, and um, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. But let's get right on into it. Let's not look at me. Let's look at the car and the tires. First and foremost, the spec of the vehicle or the tires and wheels on the vehicle. I do have MRR M017 wheels. These are 10 inch wheels in the front and I wrap them with the 285 3520R888s from Toyo. The tires fit perfectly. I don't have anything on the hubs or anything changed. It's a stock brake, stock disc. I do have magnetic ride control. And one of the other things is, is I do have the Eibach Pro Kit, which did drop the car one and an eighth inches uh, up front. The tires have plenty of clearance. There's no rubbing no issues whatsoever. Outside of that, they do tuck pretty nicely. With the front offset, they do stick out a little bit. There is a little bit of tire that sticks out on the side, but nothing a rock guard can't change. If you guys are familiar with the 1LE car in any way, these tires do sit in the wheel well better than the 1LE setup from GM. So um, either or, just stock from MRR, these do sit up pretty well in the wheel well. Um, I would recommend um, splash guards of some sort, but they fit. Now, going into the back, as most of you guys know, I did stuff a 315 on the 11 inch MRR M017. This is a 315 tw or 3020 on the car. Uh, again, I've had about 500 plus miles on the vehicle and um, it's, it's running pretty good. I do have a five mil spacer in the rear, not for the passenger side, but on the driver's side, the wheel will rub the inner fender well. Now, I only put the spacer on to avoid that issue. Now, I could take the spacer off and let it rub through and just not have a problem, but you will have to move the um, wire harness on that side so you don't cause any electrical problems or issue with your vehicle. Outside of that, these tires do fit under here with the five mil spacer, um, no problem. I mean, it would fit on the passenger side perfectly without the spacer, but a five millimeter spacer is so tiny, um, you're just not gonna have the issues that people try to complain about um, by putting the wheel out. Now, if I did 10 or 20 or <laughs> higher spacing on the rear, that would be a severe problem and I would not recommend doing that. As far as the actual tires and grippability, now, as you guys know, my car is not stock. Now, it doesn't have a ton more horsepower. It's pretty close to about 100 more horsepower over what it was at stock when I first got it. And, um, you know, due to the full headers, the full exhaust, intake manifold, I did have a tune, I did put a cam in the car, and a couple other things, and with flex fuel, I mean, the car's running really good, no problems, but the big thing to highlight with tires here is the grip. Now, the grip itself is not bad. Um, when I just gas it on a street that's not covered with half pavement um, lifted from the ground, the car grips and goes. I don't have any slippage. I don't have any tire spin whatsoever. The tires just hook up and the car takes off, which I think in anybody's mind is great. Now, keep in mind, the tread life on these tires is very low. Um, they say they'll last between 3,000 and 5,000 miles, but for people who wanna take their car to the track or say this is your weekend driver and you just wanna have a car that hooks up, these could be the tire for you. Um, now let's go jump into the car as I'm driving around and I'll speak to some of the, the differences and how the tires feel and also the sound of the tires because that is one thing a lot of people comment on. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so we're in the car and I wanna speak to the drivability, driving wise, how the tires feel, all that greatness. So. I cruise around in my car in sport mode most of the time. I'll do track mode um, whenever, it doesn't really matter. I usually drive around and shift my own car. Yes, I drive the A8 Auto, uh, but if I'm doing serious racing or I wanna take someone out, I'll just throw it into auto mode and let her take care of herself. That being said, these tires 
you know, again, they're built for the track. Now, can you drive them around town and use them around town? Of course you can. There's nothing saying you can't do that. But one of the big things is, is people have complained that these tires are loud when they're warmed up. Now, I could tell you firsthand after driving 250 miles there and back, the sound is not very loud. Yes, there is a small hum to these tires. Now, if you're like super crazy and you're one of those crazy guys who, I shouldn't say you're crazy, but if you're one of those guys who don't like any sound of your car when you're at highway speed, maybe these tires aren't for you, but the sound isn't crazy loud. Uh, I can't hear it over my exhaust, but when I come down to lower speeds, it, to me it sounds like a high speed revving, like, um, I don't know, a factory motor. And it just kind of like, like it has like a little hum to it. Um, but outside of that, it's it's not loud in my opinion. Uh, and if anything, I think it sounds perfectly fine. So drivability wise, um, I do have to comment from having my stock tires to having the Pirellis that I had on previously to these tires. The car now rides a lot more like the stock tire setup than it did with the Pirellis. The other Pirellis, they rode a little bit rougher. Um, they were 30 tall in the rear and the front, uh, and I have a pretty good feeling that played a big role in it. Um, but going with a 35 in the front, and just in general, the the um, Toyo r are a taller tire uh, compared to the Pirellis that I had, so they do just in general ride a little bit smoother in general. Uh, I keep saying in general. In general, uh, hitting bumps, doesn't feel as impactful on the front. Again, having that 35 tall on the front, just it absorbs it that much more, having that much more sidewall. Now, a lot of you will wonder, well, why did I do 30s in the rear with 35s in the front? One, in the size tire I'm looking at, that's the only size they made. And two, the difference in size is literally 0.1 inch. And in comparison to the stock tires, they're actually the same size front and back. So um, diameter wise and radius wise, either the same thing. Um, it's the same height, so therefore my speedometer and all that stuff are not thrown off like they were with my Pirellis that I had. So, and even then it was by, at 90 miles an hour, it was two miles an hour off. So it was reading two miles an hour slower than it was before. But now these tires being the same size as the stock Goodyear's uh, diameter wise, um, it same readings, so there's not any problems there. And they're actually lighter tires also, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know the science behind that, but I don't know if the weight of the tire makes a difference, but I'm pretty sure it's more the, the rotational distance for the speedometer. But anyways, enough about that. So comfort, I would say they're pretty good. They're better than the Pirellis I had. I know not a lot of people are running Pirellis, but whatever. Uh, as far as drivability, yes, they make a small hum noise at highway speeds and slowing down speeds. Is it loud and annoying? No, not nearly or at all of what some people have claimed it to be. Um, but as far as the tread life goes on these tires, again, they're not meant for daily driving. Um, they're a nice tire. They give me a lot of grip and uh, I'm headed over to an area where I could do some uh, takeoff runs for you guys. And uh, I understand it's getting dark, so I apologize if it starts getting too dark in the cab, but um, takeoff wise, as I stated outside the car, the car just hooks up and goes. Like if I just slam on that, oh, competitive shifting mode, it's easy as that. Um, if I just slam on the gas and want to go, the car will stick to the ground and go. Uh, that is one thing I wanted. Again, I have about 100 more horsepower than a stock vehicle, so it's not to my full horsepower gain, so it will be a different story on how these perform with the Pro Charger hooked up. Again, the um, I'm not expecting them to fully hook up perfectly with all that additional power, uh, but I'm hoping that I won't have to gauge and play with the throttle nearly as much in regards to locking in my launch control and how I'm launching the car with these tires versus a tire like the stock Goodyear's or the Eagle F1's that you find on the ZL1 or the 1LE. So I'm doing a lot of homework. I'm doing a lot of testing. 
Uh, for those of you out there who care about it, um, I'm doing it with the R888s now. My next step is hopefully to get a set of Spil uh, I can't talk, Pilot Sport Cup 2s to see how those tires fare compared to these ones. Um, from my understanding, the Pilot Sport Cup 2s have a better, somewhat better tread life than the R888s. Uh, but these R888s, you know, depending on how you drive or even if you do one burnout, which I would not do on them. They'll last three to 5,000 miles, maybe more. And that's mostly the rears. The fronts might last a little bit longer, but um, they, they don't have a tread warranty on them whatsoever. So keep that in mind if you're looking at these tires. Um, but I like the way they run. And I'll be quiet for a second so you guys could potentially hear what it sounds like coming to a stop. And I'll try to, I'll quiet down my exhaust. I'll put my exhaust in tour mode, which uh, will close the valves up. Hopefully we'll have a red light up here. Here we do. Hopefully it will stay red. And I'll see if you can hear that the hum noise that they do make coming down to a stop. Again, it's I'm pretty sure you guys probably did not hear it at all, but if you did it is not a loud hum noise and that's the best way i'm describing it it sounds like just a machine like like a hum noise but you can hear it almost coming down it sounds like it's a machine coming down in its rpm rev cycle but if i just gas it i mean i'm hooked the car is hooked right now that's 100 miles an hour <laughs> um tires did not slip if i had my stock tires on my pirellis I would have been spinning and not getting traction, etc. So um, we'll do another, we'll do an uphill pull right here. Actually, I might be able to get away with it. There's no cars behind me. So zero miles an hour, sport mode, going. 30. But you can see it was just pure traction and uh, it, it feels really good. It feels really good. The tires feel good. The car handles really well. I don't feel like, you know, you, you see those cars when they hit their gas and the rear end gets kind of slidey. Again, that's just tires not gripping. These things just hook up and go. Now keep in mind on a Mustang Dyno, my car's reading 467 horsepower to the wheels. And on a Dyno Jet that I tested at, it was reading at 515. So take that as you will. Um, but it is a lot more power than what the stock car was putting down. Uh, my stock car on the Dyno Jet was showing 398. So it's a pretty big difference um, in regards to power with the mods that I've done. So. Overall, I'm really happy with the performance. Again, I don't know how the tread life on these tires are gonna last me. Again, right now I'm about 550 miles. Actually, that's four, actually it's more than that, I'm sorry. It's 670 miles now um, of life into these tires. They're not really, they're not really treading too much. I did take a good drive up to Palomar Mountain, uh, which had some really good dig turns and I mean, I was pushing the car pretty good. So over that, overall, like I would say that was, I, I wouldn't compare that to a track day, um, but I would compare it to maybe an autocross day, you know, doing two or three drives around a predefined track. But, uh, you know, it, it handled really well. I felt like I can get into the corners really good. I totally forgot my GoPro. I should have brought it to get some footage for you guys, but uh, you guys probably saw a lot of the images I've posted on Instagram and probably some of the thumbnails I've even posted here on the videos from that trip. Um, but I was following a uh, Fox Body Mustang that was just a super legit fun car to be chasing. Um, a photographer was in that car, so I had to play chase with him versus uh, actually uh, leading the way. So, but we found some side roads and opened it up. It was good times. But again, these tires did everything I wanted them to do. They've done everything I've asked them to do. Um, I think the only other thing to do is really see what the zero to 60s can be for this car.
<laughs> Terrible. Okay, I give up. I give up for now. I'll do some videos. I'll do some follow-up videos. somewhere probably early, probably not early in the morning but on the weekend where nobody's at uh, just there's just too many people around and uh, I don't want to get in trouble there you guys go that is basically my review of the Toyo tires r eights. I think these are decent tires um, again they do make a little bit of humming noise a little bit but not as dramatic as people out there are trying to say they are uh, the tires give really good grip for a car with, depending on the dyno, um, you know, dyno, our Mustang Dyno 467 or Dyno Jet 515 uh, horsepower, uh, I do get grip. Um, depending on the road, you know, so some of the roads that I was driving around on trying to do zero to 60 runs, there's lots of gravel, like it's just a ton of gravel. So it's not like a prepped road trial. The best I've done off camera I did see a 3.7, 3.6. I just did a 3.8. I should have just ripped the GoPro off and showed you guys because I'm sure a lot of you guys would be like, you didn't show us, you liar. Um, but either or, um, I will do that. I'm gonna go try to find some prepped areas and do zero to 60 runs. I'll do it in a follow-up video, but um, you know, I think you guys get the gist of these tires, what they are, what they do. So again, my setup is a 285, 35, 20 in the front. I do have a 315 3020 in the rear. I am running the five mil spacers primarily to get around the rubbing issue on the driver's side. There is a wire harness on the front back corner um, that bulges out, that causes the tire to rub there. That's why the spacers are on. I could probably drop down to a three mil spacer if I really wanted to and get it really tight. Um, but outside of that, I'm not really getting any rubbing issues on my car. Um, there are a few instances if I hit a big dip or like a pothole or something, where in the rear the tires will rub on the inside fender. So it's not actually, it's not bulging out the fender, but what it's doing is it will actually hit the inside and you can actually see a little bit of the rubber there um, from that. So I think that's where, where if I slim down one or two millimeters, um, I would avoid that completely. But you will see that definitely the tire um, residue and junk um, coming off the tire in general. Uh, and also I should have put a, uh, next time I'm gonna do my GoPro, I will mount so you guys could see how she squats and how it looks in there. Um, but you could see the tire dressing flinging out on the, on the outside corner of the fenders. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's my quick review of the Toyo R888s and the 315s and the rear 285s in the front. If you guys have any questions or comments, post down below in the comments. Um, as always, I do try to respond to everything. If you enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button, support the channel, check out the other videos that are going on. Uh, if not, likes, comments, shares are appreciated, even dislikes if you didn't like the content. Um, but you know, check out Lethal Camaro merchandise down below in the description. We do have uh, brand new shirts and Lethal Camaro decals. All proceeds go to my youngest son for his blood disorder. Um, but outside of that, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for joining. Until next time, I'll see you on the road.